This is something really great. Earthquake forecasting. A breakthrough method may hand Americans a vital five-day big one warning. This is according to Sean Martin on Express UK and what scientists are now saying. They may now be able to predict earthquakes, including the big one they're expecting on the San Andreas Fault. All three sections, south, north, and middle. There's been a, an earthquake hiatus on that, and it's overdue. So five days in advance, an advance warning, and it would come as a major breakthrough in saving, of course, countless lives. Five days, you could basically evacuate areas. Researchers have so far been unable to predict an exact time when such a devastating earthquake may strike. And if it does, it would be putting millions of, if not billions of people's lives, bill, millions of, of people's lives, billions of in damages, of course, and lives at risk in seismically active regions. But research from Russian scientists show that there may be some signs deep below Earth's surface when a major tremor could be coming. Scientists analyze internal gravity waves, and we're going to have another image of that because they did find gravity waves over Australia and we're going to get into that in another video. Internal gravity waves, IGWs, and they stem from fluids in the Earth's interior. This is what our friend Terrell Blackstar tells us of concerning the magma corridors around the Earth. So finely, finely tuned satellites can detect these small oscillations. Researchers from the HSE University and the RAS Space Research Institute, both in Russia, analyzed data to conclude that they're able to predict an earthquake. So that's great news. I mean, this is fantastic. The team of physicists chose three earthquakes to analyze. They analyzed the Uzbekistan May 26, 2013 quake, the Kyrgyzstan on July, uh, January 8th, 2007, and the Kazakhstan, January 28th, 2013 earthquakes. So five days before the earthquakes, there were slight IGWs, that's the internal gravity waves, which presented themselves as a fluctuation of air mass. And we're going to see that in another video, because that's very important. A fluctuation of the air mass, and it's as if it pushes all the clouds away. It's like a huge bubble of a hand pushing everything out of the way. Now, according to, I wonder if it, that's horizontally we see it, but I wonder if it also goes up into the atmosphere or even down to Earth. But anyway, according to research published in the journal Doc Lady Earth Sciences, there were thermal changes in the middle atmosphere stemming from the lithosphere. So the lithosphere caused the atmosphere to heat up. The outermost part of the Earth's crust, which preempts the tremors. The team said the internal gravity waves, the IGWs, began to grow five days before the tremor, peaking two days prior to the event. This is fantastic discoveries. Of course, not good, because it would be a huge quake, but at least if you have this foreknowledge of what takes place, you can uh, alert the populace to evacuate to a safe area, saving lives, of course. So the professor at HSC Faculty of Physics, Sergei Popil, and the head of IKI Laboratory, one of the authors of the study said, this means that processes occur in the Earth's lithosphere, the development of which gives rise to convective instabilities in the lower atmosphere. So you see, when we have earth changes and tremendous earth activity, that also heats up our atmosphere. So they say they, say they are the cause of IGWs, internal gravity waves, in seismically active regions. Internal gravity waves, once they reach the mesosphere, can be destroyed. When this happens, the IGW energy transforms into, into, transforms into thermal motion, which affects the temperature. So this new discovery could help scientists predict when the big one might strike. 
The big one, as we know, is an impending massive earthquake, which will inevitably one day strike California. And this is what our USGS scientists have been warning us about before, during, and after the Ridgecrest earthquakes. So tension has been building, as we know, along the San Andreas Fault for centuries. Experts predicting ground-splitting quake for when this fault line does rupture. U.S. Geology, uh, Geological Survey said that it will be at least a 7.9 magnitude of the Richter scale and will leave a destructive path because a lot of areas around where it will strike are very soft landfill areas, sand or mud or landfill, and as we know, the, the, that shaking will be great. Uh, and unfortunately, for, for example, the San Francisco Bay Area, most people live and work in landfill areas there, and uh, that's not good. It's not the basalt areas which are across in Oakland. It's um, the, the San Francisco Bay Area is very soft, and there will be liquefaction. So if scientists can use this latest technique to predict the big one, it could save up to 40 million lives in California alone. Now, other scientists believe there is no way that an earthquake can be forecasted. John Bellini, who is a geophysicist at USGS, said, we can't predict or forecast earthquakes. Sometimes for a large earthquake, you'll have a foreshock or two, but we don't know there are foreshocks until the big one happens. USGS completely denies that earthquakes can be forecasted, writing on its website, neither the USGS nor any other scientists have ever predicted a major earthquake. We do not know how, we do not expect to know how any time in the foreseeable future. And the scientists have previously found a link between the climate and earthquakes, mainly climate changes and the melting ice caps. Researchers from Leibniz Universität in Hanover, Germany, investigated a major fault zone running across Denmark over the course of two and a half million years ago to 12,000 years ago when we had the mini ice age at the end of the last ice age. And the team found that as ice melted, it affected the sediment deep underneath the surface, essentially reactivating fault lines according to the research led by Dr. Christian Brandis. The scientific journal Scientia read, the 150 kilometer long Ostning thrust underwent a series of faulting movements over a 140 million year period, ending about 60 million years ago the team has shown that movements along this fault also occurred very recently and modeling these structures has enabled Dr. Brandis and his team, his colleagues, to demonstrate that the Ostning thrust was reactivated at the end of the last glaciation around 12,000 years ago. He said this fault reactivation was accompanied by earthquakes which the team identified from the soft sediment deformation structures that developed in this area. Their findings also imply that an earthquake which took place in this region during the autumn of 1612 might have been triggered due to the stress changes in the Earth's crust caused by melting ice sheet. So, okay, the USGS said you can't predict an earthquake, we don't know what's going to happen, you don't know if it's an aftershock, foreshock, main shock, until all this has happened. Yeah, but that was before all these this new, uh, new methods have been discovered. They filmed gravitational waves from overhead. So, you know, when you have this at hand, you have to look at the evidence. You can't ignore the evidence and bury your head in the sand. So I think this is fantastic that they found this. Hopefully other scientists will look into this and uh, confirm it, hopefully. I'll leave a link below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on 
not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.